Welcome back, everybody. It's RMT Aquila. Today we got a live one. I have Ray uh, from the Northeast Corridor. She uh, she uses she and her pronouns, and uh, happens to be pansexual, and that'll become relevant in a moment. She's a fellow content creator and does drama, so hang on to your butts. We're going in. <laughs> All right. So I met you through Leanna, and we were going to town on the whole the bathroom bands. <laughs> oh, <sighs> shit. <laughs> They've been going on for a while. Is that, like, isn't that been a thing for so long? Ever since there was a whole um, thing about trans women going into the women's bathrooms, and I'm still like at awe that that's still a conversation that is being had. I thought we kind of squashed that. Apparently not. It, it's like it's the zombie penny that just keeps coming, turning up and turning up and turning up. Right. So weird. So you know. As someone who has always used the women's bathroom, what are your thoughts? I mean, you know, there there is no safety here. Say what you mean, mean what you say. So I've never had issues with people in general using bathrooms. If you got to go, you got to go. I've been at bars where the women's bathroom is always occupied because women have, like, apparently the smallest bladders on the planet where they all need to use the bathroom at once. So if I have to go to the bathroom, I'm using the men's bathroom because they at least have one stall or at least, you know, a toilet I can use. So I don't care. Um, I think that the the weird part is, like, I feel like a woman's bathroom is the safest for trans women to use, number one, it doesn't bother me. We have stalls. It's private anyways. So what is the issue of somebody going into a stall where you can't see them, they can't see you? It's still private. Well, I mean, <laughs> this dovetails into the second point that I was going to save until later, but you already touched on it. You know, there's this constant theme that keeps coming up from anti-trans people i'm not gonna call them gender critical i'm not gonna call them terse they're just anti-trans and they keep saying that if men posing as trans women are allowed in female spaces they're just going to assault people that doesn't that doesn't seem to bear out. I mean, granted, I will say that trans women are as much at risk of being a predator as any other any other sex or gender in the population. And that still puts the risk very low. Yeah. I mean, as someone who is on that side of the gender sex divide. I mean, what are your thoughts? Cause I'm trying to figure this shit out. I mean, it's, it's kind of just like, what's to stop a, a cisgender male from entering a woman's bathroom and doing that. Um, it, it's not like the bathroom doesn't have a protective barrier where it detects the gender that walks in and then like zaps you if you're not the right gender that's on the door. It, it's just, it's a stupid argument to have. It's a stupid like thing to say because it doesn't matter, right? And, and a trans, a transgender woman, their, their whole thought process isn't going into a woman's bathroom like, wow, I hope there's a really hot woman there that I can touch. It's more like, I just have to pee, and I don't want to go into a male bathroom where I'm going to go in there. They're going to look at me and, and could possibly assault me. So it's just a dumb, stupid stigma to put out into the world that transgender women 
are going are going to do all of the stuff that you know you do the money it takes the time it takes the mental stuff that happens when you're transitioning to do all that just to go and assault someone that's the most mind-boggling thought process for people to have and i just look at these people like you guys do understand y'all sound really dumb and ignorant and you just don't like like what is what do you trying to say so it's just it's just embarrassing when people think stupid like that like well, I mean, it seems to be a, a, a relatively popular uh, sentiment, uh, or at least among one of Twitter's most uh, vocal anti-trans uh, personalities, J.K. Rowling. Oh, J.K. Rowling. No, hit you know, me. Well, it's more like just like, listen, act... I, I love freedom of speech is great and all, but it's like, listen, you either want to be famous or you want to be a politician. Pick a freaking lane and stay there, please. Like, I, I'm sorry. Like, I, I guess I, I try to understand everyone's point of view and arguments. Like, I just try to kind of see people's points of view. I understand what J.K. Rowland's trying to say. This whole transgender women aren't real women. It's like, I understand science. Okay. I understand science. But my whole thing is like, I, I, and I, I, I'm, I, mean, I know this might be hot for, for some people because I've had conversations with transgender women before, but it's like, I hate calling people trans because to me, it's like, if I meet you as a woman, you introduce me as a woman. To me, you're a woman. You're not a trans. You're a woman. You know, it might be different if I met you as your born gender and then I had to deal with the transition, but I still respect that. Like, to me, you are who you present yourself to be to me. If you are a woman, you are appearing as a woman, you identify, cool. You would say, hi, my name is Jeanette and I am female. I don't, cool. That to me is you are a woman. The word trans to me always bothered me a little bit because it just feels like, it defeats the purpose of what transgender people are trying to do, which is live their lives as who they are. And if you're a woman, that's it. You're just a woman. I, I don't need to know that you were born male because that part that part of you is gone. That part of you no longer exists. So that's why when it comes to like when people are saying, well, trans, and, and I've had this explained to me before. I'm like, I get it. But at the same time, to me personally, for my thing, it's like if you just look at people as they are, there wouldn't be this conversation anymore. You know, oh, no, you're just a woman. What fun would that be? <laughs> I mean, true, there wouldn't be no content. But like, to me, like, for instance, you, you are a beautiful woman. And that's it. That's it. You're just a beautiful woman to me. And and I see your your soul and your heart and your personality. Like, whatever, if you know you want to share what you went through to transition, that's beautiful. It's fine. But I always think when it comes to people like JK Rowan, that's where I'm going to go back to. That's why I went to the long winded thing is that people like JK Rowan, they, they don't understand that that's all transgender people want to be viewed as, as who they are now, like respect them. You don't have to say, well, you're not a biological. Who cares? Who cares? I mean, there are some people who do care and I, have for myself, you know, just for for clarity's sake, mm -hmm. I've really embraced my own transness, if you will, mm -hmm. because, you know, growing up, I grew up biracial in a time when, you know, biracial kids were just not a thing. Um, right. My parents got married not long after, just a few years after the Loving v. Virginia uh, Supreme Court ruling. So biracial kids were not common. Right. And I got used to being a part of both worlds, but neither. Right. So for me, this is just a different, you know, being trans is just a different evolution of it where, oh, we got a pupper. Yeah. We got a shy puppy. I, no, she's oh. not shy. She's just seeing if she can come over and say hello. <laughs> this is baby. Oh. Yeah. What kind baby. of dog? She's a, she's a Jack Russell Terrier mix. She's a rescue. So. Oh. She happy. Oh. Yeah, she's happy. She's like, "What are you doing, mom?" <laughs> <laughs>
but I mean, that's, you know, and for, and also for me to say that I'm a woman carte blanche is to really not acknowledge my path in life. I live mm. 45 years as a man. Mm. Uh, so I'm, you know, I transition much later in life. I'm damn near, I'm, you know, closing in on 50. Oh, um, I would never guessed. Uh, my mother had a baby face and I got it. And then I'm in the middle of puberty again. So, uh, oh man, that's crazy. Yeah. Oh, uh, I, I've joked with my friends that I'm a 48 year old teenage girl with combat experience. <laughs> that's badass though uh i'm get when i turn 50 i'm getting that on a t-shirt on like uh um on top of the trans flag because yes i'm That'd still debating merch. whether or not i want in small print act accordingly right you that should be a good that would make a great t-shirt though no i mean 100 percent get it like the journey um, because I, I a lot of my friends, a fair amount of my friends, um, have transitioned. I'm proud to say that I picked one of my transgender friends' uh, names when. She, uh, oh wow! He, he yes, when he transitioned, uh, I got to pick the name, and they stuck with it till this day. And I was like, "Yay! I got to pick your name." Um, and I know that it's it's hard in the journey. Um, the story behind it is always important, but like I said, for me personally, it's just like. I'm okay with knowing the story. It's just to me, when it comes to people using that argument that transgender women aren't real women, it's like, but th that doesn't matter. Like, I don't care if the biology, the science, it's like, let people live their lives. If they identify as a woman, let them be a woman. What, what, what does it hurting you that a transgender person, an individual wants to be a woman? They're not hurting me. You know, just like the bathroom thing, they're not hurting me. Yeah, I mean, and that's my school of thought. If if somebody is, you know, going out of their way to disrupt the flow of what goes on in a bathroom, and let's be honest, lots of shit happens in, in, in the bathroom, quite literally. But if someone's, you know, dropping a deuce, why the fuck am I going to interrupt the sanctity of that moment? I mean, come on. It's a fucking bathroom. I mean, it'd be different if it was in like the back of a porn store where other shit happens. But it's a fucking bathroom. Let me right. just take a piss or take a shit, you know, uh, you know, for those that, that need it, change your pad and get the fuck on with life right and put the toilet seat down that is my only gripe <laughs> you know what i i think today was like one of the first times i've stood to pee in like three years i can't tell you how many times i've used um a bathroom where I've known a transgender woman has been in there because I've seen I've seen them come out and like listen we, we don't like you know how you know you got the guys that are like well if you, you should always look down when you you know sit and like that's if you're living in a house with a man who you know that like the seat but in the women's bathroom we don't expect the toilet seat to be up so we do not feel inclined to look down before we sit down so that is my only pet peeve with transgender women like I don't care. Use my bathroom all the time. Just, you know, toilet seat down because I'm not going to look and I have gotten the butt wet because I haven't looked. <laughs> That's happened to me as well, just in my own home, you know, living <laughs> as a man. So I, <laughs> I'm not going to hate on that. And, you know, when in Rome, do as the Romans. Don't, again, don't upset the flow. But I'm not going in there to have, you know, tea and crumpets. I'm right. going in, do my business, maybe, you know, freshen up the lipstick, and I'm GTFO. Right. And and that's it. That's what women do. That's what men do in the bathroom. So it's like, and, and for, for argument's sake, right, say a transgender woman 
did assault somebody in the bathroom. That has nothing to do with their gender. It has nothing to do with what they identify as. It all has to do with that person being a bad person and doing a bad thing. Wow. Yes, and absolutely that person should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, just like anyone else committing sexual assault. Right. So, I mean, I don't that, understand the argument. I mean, that makes sense. We hold individuals responsible for individual action. We punish right. individuals for individual action. So why are we trying to do the whole group punishment thing? It didn't work in the army. It's not going to work in a social construct that doesn't have a concept of group punishment. It doesn't work like that. I mean, right. it might work in a place like Japan, where they do have, you know, <coughs> themes of collective responsibility. Right. But in the U.S., fuck no, we're a bunch right. of individualists. Right. It's it's just a stupid thing to be angry about. And like I said, uh, I I have no issues with it. I don't understand why there are other women who have issues with it. Because, like I said, it, it's. It's just dumb, dumb stigmas that exist. And I had always thought that things got better once, you know, more people were accepting of transgender women and men and and there was more understanding and there was more support. And now it just feels like we're going backwards. And, and for what? Like, I want to know what changed because all of a sudden I just see so much hate and I understand some of the other side's arguments but at the same time it's like there is no need to be this extreme this legit hatred and well, fear for me the fear actually makes sense and i've had multiple conversations with it about this with my father and my brother um and they're wonderful, wonderful human beings, completely supportive. Um, and they, the worlds that they live in, my, they're both still Catholic. Um, I'm sure you know what that's all about. Unfortunately, yes. And, you know, my, the conversations I've had with my brother are probably the most are probably the sharpest oh sorry <laughs> that's my Go beeper ahead. for my food hold on a second i just gotta turn the oven off ah! i can let you cool down <laughs> <laughs> um but i mean if you need to to eat on, on on camera we're good i can well i'll let it cool down we have some time before i gotta get it <laughs> okay um but the thing trans people represent change and for a lot of people that it, that it rep we represent change that people can't cope with because think about how many people you know grew up knowing there are men and there are women knowing all the intricacies of you know the different chromosome uh variants were a handful of people and now joe schmo has to deal you know john q public has to deal with somebody that may have a chromosomal difference that's presenting itself in a different way different neurological developments, you know, creating uh, the necessity for uh, transition. Mm -hmm. That's going to wreck a lot of people's, you know, sense of the world. Because I, I was talking to dad and I asked him, I said, hey, dad, when did you know you were a man? When did you realize it? When did you have to contend with that? Mm. And he didn't have an answer. 
my dad lives between his ears. I mean, I love the man to death, but holy shit. (laughs) (laughs) On things that require thinking, he is so completely extra. And he was stumped. I mean, it was so much stumped the chump. And, you know, I had to to make that realization and follow those rules starting at about age six. I got real good at being a social chameleon because I had no choice. And then at age 25, that's when I learned that I had uh, a schism between my core gender identity and the gender identity that I presented to the world and then said, okay, here's, here's your diagnosis. You've got this problem, but we're not going to do anything about it. I'm like, the fuck? Right. Right. Let me shut my door real quick. Sorry. Sorry. I forgot my roommate just came home. No worries. I'm sorry. I feel like I'm interrupting the whole recording. <laughs> I'll edit it out. Um, yeah. So those are things that that I had to deal with. Right, right. And, you know, and, that, and those are part of why, you know, my journey is important to me. I realize for other people, it's like, uh, what do I do with this information? Right. I mean, it's important to know for sure. But to go back to the root point, people are having to deal with things that they've never had to deal with before. Mm -hmm. And trans people are at the forefront of those changes. Yeah. And with the internet, you know, accelerating the the pace of change, people can individuals can change relatively rapidly but as you get larger and larger and larger groups you have much more sort of intellectual inertia to deal with um young people these days gen z and now gen alpha they're growing up with the internet so things change you know on a daily or weekly basis And that's just the world they know. But for somebody who's Gen X like me, I went, um, my first phone was rotary dial. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't get a touch tone phone until I think I was in the eighth or ninth grade. Wow. We didn't get a cordless phone until I was almost in my senior year. I was in, I was, you know, well into college before I got my first cell phone. Jeez. (laughs) I had a pager. (laughs) I had one of those too. (laughs) Yep. So there's the amount of change that you know, people like me can deal with is, you know, I individually, I can deal with a lot, you know, having been a soldier, but there's a lot of people that like the stability and that's not necessarily a bad thing, you know, but we need that happy medium between the early adopters and things must, you know, reset to 1950s and stay there. There's a happy medium. And so when you get a lot of people who are already on the the extension glide path and they really don't have anything, any reason to change because, hello, extinction comes for everybody. Right. So they're like, well, why should I? And they're Mm -hmm. mad because people... People are requiring them to change at a pace that's not their own. So I get, I get the frustration. I get the fear. 
where I lose or where, where they lose me is what they do with it. True. True. I mean, it's like, hey, tell me that you're afraid. We can work with that. I mean, right. we're all human here, allegedly. So I have a hot take that's going to probably, I don't know who it's going to take off, but it's probably going to take off somebody because so the people who hate transgender people the most don't understand that I, I and I, this is a theory I've had. I feel like when they call transgender people having mental illnesses, I'm like, right, but think about it. Why would that be? Because society caused that mental illness. Because when 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 a man wants to wear a dress or makeup, the stigma is, well, they're gay. They shouldn't do that. That's a woman thing. You guys could like the when I say you guys, I mean the people who who hate to see a man dressed like a woman, like you, you, you made you cause that because now you're having these young people like when when you were when when most boy little boys are little boys, they don't care about the gender. They're wearing mommy's makeup. They're putting on mommy's shoes and dresses. To them it's fun. To them they, they want they like the style. It's fine. So when a man wears a dress, why is that a bad thing? That that's because that that people said that's weird. That's a girl thing. And that causes a stigma. And then when you grow up you think, well because I'm saying this based on my personal experience. Because when I was growing up, I questioned my gender because I dressed like a boy. I was a tomboy. I would wear, you know, Dallas cowboy jacket, a bit, you know, a jacket my father gave me that I wore because my father gave me, not because I was like, oh, I'm a boy. But I would wear baggy clothes because they were comfortable, and people would think I was a boy. So when I grew up as a kid, I'm thinking maybe I am a boy. But that's like I said, the the stigma. Because I'm a girl, I'm supposed to dress in frilly dresses. I hated dresses growing up. They were uncomfortable. The The air that blew up my dress bothered me, so I wear sweatpants. So that's why I'm like, you know, I did question my gender at one point in my life because I was being told as a child, I can't dress like that. I need to dress like a girl. And that's why I thought, well, my experience, like, I can't imagine how that has been for a lot of young kids who just wanted to be comfortable or dressed in clothes that they felt comfortable in their skin. And that became, well, you're a boy. You can't wear, wear a dress. You can't have your hair too long because you're looking too much like a female. But you like long hair. What is a problem? And that's why I feel like it caused a lot of confusion in kids growing up because now they're questioning well, if I'm dressing like a girl and I like dressing like a girl, well, maybe I'm a girl then. And then that's when, when people don't think, well, this is how you you want to talk about transgender people trying to go after your kids. Well, what have you done for the kids? You caused all of these mental confusions for these children because they just want to be kids. They don't care about what their gender is as kids, but you do because you're the one upset that your kid got into mommy's closet and is wearing their dress because they want to be like mommy, because they love their mommy. It had nothing to do with the gender of their love for their mother. They didn't want to put on a dress because they wanted to look like mommy. They just wanted to get connected with their mom. And that's why I say my theory is, is like, you know, a lot of these people did cause this mental health when they caused the stigma around it. That's just my theory though. I could be a hundred percent wrong. <laughs> no, I no, that's actually a pretty good theory. I'm going to toss a nuance grenade into it and see what happens. So yes. My theory, my hot take is that the reason why there's so many anti-trans people saying that transgender, being transgender is a mental illness stems from the DSM three and uh, three and four. Mm. So it, you like when I got evaluated, I was mm. evaluated for gender identity disorder mm. and that was in effect the dsm-4 was from 1994 until 2013 so a nice nice chunk of time and right. then with the dsm-5 that came out in 2013 there was uh, it changed from gender identity disorder to gender dysphoria, which is not classified as a disorder. So it's no longer a mental illness. 
it's in the right. same category as depression. It's a quality mm. of life thing, which means more people, the strictures are more relaxed. And so more people fall into that category. And, and as you broaden the category, obviously there are going to be some people for whom the diagnosis is applied, but doesn't necessarily fit. I mean, it's a numbers game. The more people you you test for it, the more people are going to, you know, test positive. And what is that? Oh, snap. I have my headphones. That is my, that is my fan. Sorry. <laughs> I have a lot of things going on in my apartment. Hold on, let me turn that off so it doesn't keep going. It go, it, oh, no, I have you, it you, off. Well, well, I have it off, but if the temperature gets too low, it'll turn on to like bring the temperature back to a certain temperature. So I'm okay. like, how did that go? Oh, it must have got cold in my room. Ah, so many distractions with a good conversation. I should have prepared better. <laughs> it's all good. Um, so... And then in, in the DSM three, I think it was transsexualism. Mm -hmm. So there's all this time with, you know, a mismatch between your internal gender identity and your external and your the sex assigned at birth. That's, you know, for a lot of people, that was what they knew if they even knew the DSM uh, existed and for those people watching the DSM is the diagnostic and St statistical manual. It's the U S Bible for diagnosis, diagnosing um, mental health issues. Hmm. Now there are some people that say you don't need a medical diagnosis to be trans. Personally, I, you know, based on my own experience, it does help. It also confers legal rights that, you know, self-identifying doesn't do. What's right for everybody? I'm not going to judge. Right. You know, presuming you are a full-fledged adult, vaya con Dios. Go with God. And I, I hope you make the best decisions you can. For right. me, it, for me, it was an actual medical problem. And so I'm taking those steps, but right. even if it is a disorder, what's the underlying condition that creates the mismatch? And if we think about how how much has to go according to plan from fertilization to puberty? How right. much development has to go absolutely spot on right. to get a healthy cisgendered person from conception to the beginning of adulthood? It's a lot. Right. And in there have been studies where people got MRIs and before they even started hormones, their brain structures were more like their target gender than their mm. birth sex. Mm. It really is in the brain meets and you can't you can't just magically choose to have internal brain structures of a gender. It doesn't work like that. So True. like being gay, it's, it's innate, it's baked in. Right. And there are, you know, there are differing levels, which makes the whole bathroom thing just all that much more, you know. Yeah insane <laughs> yeah I, I i don't fucking get it see that's i i like that you educated me on that because 
yeah when you think because i have said this before too like when i deal because i unfortunately when i talk about some of these topics on my channel i have you know some of the people who um are very ignorant and will you know try to push me and say oh well you know being gay is a choice and i'm like okay so let me hit you with this you're a straight male right and they're like yeah i'm like okay go out and have sex with a guy right now choose to go out and have sex with a guy and they're like no because i'm not gay i was like exactly exactly so if gay being gay is a choice and being transgender is a choice right then then you can go out and you can be gay right but you're not you're not going to do that because you just said you are a straight man cool so why why is it any different than a gay person or a transgender person if it's if it's a choice like well they're choosing to live the lifestyle i'm like right and you're choosing to not live that lifestyle which means it's 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 not a choice where you're choosing not to do something because you're not that it's the most weirdest argument to have with some people where it's like i understand the issues that they have and it's not even really they they're just like well don't shove it down our throats i'm like i understand that because sometimes i'm even looking at some shows and TV, and it's mostly in the media, and I get it. Like, listen, I even look at some shows where I'm like, listen, I get that the character is a transgender woman, but like, I don't really care about it that much. I mean, it's a super, you're a superhero. Just be a superhero. <laughs> Just be a superhero for me. <laughs> My brother has one of the absolute best takedowns of the whole choice uh, argument. Uh -huh. He said, take a look at Tiger King. If fucking cocaine and tigers couldn't make somebody fucking gay, you can't choose to wake up someday and say, I want to suck dick. Right. It's not, I mean, some people, some people do, you know, you know, uh, being a professional boyfriend uh, for gay porn. And if you, if you can do that and it makes you happy, Go on with your bad self. But for mo for 99.999% of the population, it's, you know, being straight or being gay or being bi or pan is not, uh, it's not a choice. It's, mm -hmm. all right, am I attack attracted to women? Yes. Okay. Am I attracted to men? Okay. Am I attracted to everybody? Well, hey, you, you've got, you know, a million different options to get shut down. Pretty much. I, yeah, I mean, that's, a, that is a real thing. And on, on the whole attraction and rejection thing, there are some dumb motherfuckers out there who think that that because they're trans and they identify as a woman, that they are entitled to the attraction of someone who is female attracted. No, no, you don't. I appreciate you saying that. <laughs> if if any cis person can say, if any cis woman can say, no, I'm not attracted to you. Then any cisgendered man can say, no, I'm not attracted to you. And it fucking ends there. Right. There's no, there's no discussion. There's no bullshit. No means no. And if it has to no, mean no means no for women, it has to mean the same thing for men. It does not matter the reason. It's true. I, it's funny you brought that up because I literally had this conversation with somebody the other night because <laughs> I won't explain why, we, but why we got to that point. It was pretty funny, but still. So there was a conversation about because um, he is a, a, a cisgen male and there was a conversation about... Um, the attraction of of like like why transgender women like are put off and i i mean i understand there's attraction obviously like you said like no means no if you're not attracted you're attracted doesn't matter but it's like but y'all watch straight 
porn, which means you're watching a man have sex with a woman. I know you're not watching the guy, but at the same time, the guy is still present. And that doesn't really seem to phase you because now you're like focused on the girl and maybe there's like this weird al the illusion of like you pretending to be the guy I don't know but then when you get to like the whole thing of like guys always remember when when males are always like oh my god girl on girl actions hot like so like if you guys watch lesbian porn and you watch lesbians use you know the fake ones what is the difference between the fake ones versus the real ones because I mean it's just it's a hot chick with breasts but she happens to have a penis and it's kind of like to me very confusing and there was a big argument about that <laughs> And I'm like, I get it, but I kind of don't get it. I'm trying to understand what the difference is, I guess. Is it because you know I, it's a transgender woman? I don't know. Um, oh boy. Um, see, it's confusing. See, that's how I knew I was pansexual because I'm watching. Because when I first found out what transgender was, I first thing I do is like. What is trans? First introduction to transgender women. I'm not even gonna lie. Porn, porn. Actually, no, no. <laughs> For me, it actually wasn't. Um, one of my fraternity brothers invited me out to a club uh, in Atlanta, here in Atlanta, and they were having a fetish night in the middle of the fucking week. Just. I was 18 years old. I didn't know shit about fucking shit. And I got goat roped into it. And holy fuck. It was actually life changing and life saving. And because when I went there, I wound up running, meeting my first trans woman. Mm. Like even before I, you know, got exposed to trans porn, because this was back in 1993. And I, I was like, I'm like, wait a second, you're you were born a dude, but you wait, huh? What? <laughs> and that set me on a course to actually find out what was going. I'm like, you're what I want to be. And oh yeah, that was I had a strange path. <laughs> I, I had a very that. strange path. And because the internet was not what it is now, I literally had to go and look this shit, look this shit up in books. Oh boy. Like that was physical fun. media. And I had to ask actual librarians for help. You want to talk about fucking awkward? Yeah, <laughs> I can imagine. So, yeah, it, it's this whole... But no, the, the reason why I was, like, not saying anything but wanting to say something is, like, how not safe for work do I want to be on my own fucking channel? <laughs> we get to the after dark section. <laughs> yeah well you know what we we need to do an after hours section uh because i did that with leanna and jerry and that was a fucking riot that was so much fun but yeah we'll we'll, we'll schedule that one um because yeah that needs to be like a live stream a limited live stream and then disappear forever <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, it's 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 a good question because it's it it confused me as like I said as a pansexual, I'm trying to understand because number one, I wasn't always pansexual. I just thought I was bi, and then once I was introduced to certain things, I realized, oh, I like that. Okay, I like that. What's wrong with me? I, I I'm very confused. And then when I asked some you know friends that are part of the LGBTQ community, they're like, oh, honey, you're pan, and I was like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking awesome i, I mean it, like i had for the longest time i had this illusion that i was a straight male yeah 
I did a stint like being attracted to men, but then I realized I'm I wasn't really attracted to men per se. But that's we'll save that for after hours. <laughs> um but yeah, I just the whole the whole attraction thing. It's like and, and I don't know what's worse, the the handful of trans women that get bent out of shape because they believe that female attracted people should be attracted to them because they see themselves as female. I'm like, no, attraction is much, much more nuanced. And if you don't fall into that, they're not going to be attracted to you. And if you demand that kind of attention, guess what? It's sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. Let's not go there. We have enough PR problems as it is for the trans community. Let's just leave that one the fuck alone. Right. Because they have preferences, too, of the type of men they're into. So should we just, like, hold them to that same standard? Like, okay, well, you want a, a big, beefy muscle man. Why? Why? why what's wrong with the, the plus-size thick man? You, know, you don't like Or them the noodly boys. Big? Right. Like, there, you guys have preferences, too. So I don't understand why you feel like cisgen men who are into women have to have that same thing like there there are men who aren't attracted to to black women and i'm a black woman so i'm supposed to call them racist all of a sudden it's like i there's i i shouldn't have to force somebody to find me attractive i mean can you imagine how awkward a a, a sexual you know encounter would be if they're not really attracted to you right i mean how far south is this gonna go I'm just picturing somebody like getting a guy home and then like all of a sudden he can't perform and then it's just like well what do you not attract to me it's like well he can't control that that's like an involuntary thing <laughs> actually I found out that that it's not that simple and this we're gonna go dark here for a second <laughs> so um, my ex-wife was not the best person mm. and she had girls night out and I was stuck at home cleaning the house taking care of the kids and I finally got you know every, all the kids put to bed and for some strange reason we had a copy of Anthony Hopkins, Titus. It was a kind of a post-apocalyptic or postmodern adaptation of Titus Andronicus mm. by Shakespeare. Fucking tragedy. I had no earthly idea what was about to happen. And right at the end, right after, like, ev literally everybody dies in the dinner scene where somebody's kid gets cooked into a pie and served. She rolls in with her friend demanding a threesome. Whoa. I am tired. I am fucking depressed. Absolutely not in the mood, but I wasn't given a choice. And they got I wouldn't like I was absolutely mentally not in it but the bits were performing and I was fucking miserable <sighs> that's awful jeez like oh my goodness like <sighs> and so when you know when I think about that you know yeah it there are some autonomic functions to you know getting an erection. I mean, come on, morning wood is a thing. Thankfully, not for me anymore. Um, <laughs> right? Like, oh, I do not miss 
having to almost do a handstand to take a morning pee. Just gods, no. I mean, so just so you know, um, I call it morning mist for females who wake up a little excited. Um, <laughs> it is a little annoying to wake up with morning mist not as annoying as morning wood but morning mist is not as fun <laughs> but i mean so i mean i'm just using morning wood as an example of sometimes you don't have control over it whether or not you're having an exciting dream or not i mean in college it was so bad i mean oh my god fucking blue balls and you know first thing in the morning that fucking hurts yeah i can't i can't imagine we don't we don't got those problems thank goodness but period cramps i guess they can be i mean yeah i mean uh i've i've actually had conversations with my wife about period cramps and then when i transitioned the whole like hormone changes holy fuck I got a front row seat for that shit. Yeah, I heard stories from my transgender friends about how like the transition is like something that and, and that's like I that's the thing that's just wild about the whole thing that we're, we're even discussing. Just to say, just a little bit of a side note is that the process is from what I understand, from what I've been told, and obviously you can obviously tell me if I'm wrong or not from what I've heard is it's like it's it's a lot it's it's like you know especially when you're older you've already went through puberty so like you said in the beginning like you have to go through it again and I can't imagine experiencing that as a, a as an adult because it was already a pain in the ass when you were <laughs> when we were younger going through puberty but as an adult having to kind of just and not only that go through it from like the opposite of like the first time around like now you're you're going through it as a, a, a female so you're having to experience what what females go through when we go through puberty oh god so remember remember when i said i'm a 48 year old teenage girl yeah how those mood swings for you <laughs> How those emotional outbursts, how the, how those waking up and wanting to cry in a tub of ice cream for no reason. <laughs> I didn't have those, but like my first 90 days on uh, hormones was menopause. Oh my God. And you, whoa. So oh yeah, no. I spent the, well, actually, no, not, not completely the first 90 days. Oh fuck! So you just like skipped a level. So my endocrinologist started me on a starvation dose: two milligrams of estradiol by mouth every day. I had mm. hot flashes at night. I had hot flashes during the day. Oh yeah, it was for real, for real. You skip levels. That's insane. Um, oh, and I was on spironolactone, which dropped my testosterone levels to almost nothing, like right off the bat. Ooh. And I already had low testosterone. And it was, oh... It was fugly because mood swings, hot flashes, irritability. Um, I hadn't thrown progesterone into the mix yet. Mm. And that. And then three weeks later, I was having a, I realized I was having a reaction to the spironolactone. It is a diuretic that has testosterone blocking properties. So I wound up, I mean, this is going to get graphic. So I had the shits. I had I diarrhea. Was I was an endoscopy technician for four years. I'm good. <laughs> okay. So I had diarrhea, which means I couldn't replace the water I was peeing out. Oh, wow. 
And my doctor took me off of hormone treatment for like a month uh, total because we tried to start it back. And then and then finally put me back on the on just the estradiol. So I was getting two milligrams of estradiol per day, still having hot flashes, had no testosterone. I had almost no hormones in my system. Wow. I was fucking miserable, but I was starting to get used to it. And then breasts started to grow. Oh, no. And let me tell you how I discovered that. So, let's see. Get this right. So, you see that that, that clasp? Uh-huh. Before I transitioned, I slept naked except for my watch and my wedding ring. Mm -hmm. In the middle of the night, my nipple caught the clasp. <gasps> ah, no. <laughs> no. I'm good for my boobs because like, ow. <laughs> it was, it, were, they, when, were they sore? No. It like, was I mean, in general, when they were growing, were they like sore? Um... Yeah, that came later. Mm -hmm. So I went from nothing to a BC cup from January 2021 to December. And then something happened in January, February of 2022 by the numbers, not like commercial cup size. But I went from a C to an H in 60 days. Wow. So but wait, I only wait. What you're but I only wear a D is... cup breast or okay, a D so cup wait, bra. What, what you're telling me is instead of women getting surgery, we could just do that and get the bigger boobs i mean i don't have that problem i'm just saying i see all these women get surgery i'm like well y'all could just get the pills and just make your boobies grow yeah so here's the thing so oral estradiol it hits your liver and gets converted into estrone or a lot of it does and then the rest goes on into your system estrone is the hormone that is most most likely to cause breast cancer. Oh, never mind then. It's also uh, the form of estrogen that is most likely to cause a thrombotic event. Well, okay then. We're just gonna act like I didn't say something stupid. It's okay. I mean, <laughs> most women don't think about these things but these were things that i had to be i legally had to be informed of right when i started right um and then so because of my age my doctor didn't want me to be on pills because it puts wear and tear on your liver i'm like okay cool i wanted to go on injections he put me on patches Mm. so my skin hadn't gotten thin enough to absorb the medicine so i went from a starvation dose to nothing oh wow my testosterone at the time was 10 nanograms per deciliter mm. for healthy for proper male function I was supposed to have 300. Damn. Women, on average, we're talking cis women, mm -hmm. have testosterone levels between 50 and 100 nanograms per deciliter. Damn. I was at 10. And wow. at one point in my and at, at one point in my transition. I literally had undetectable levels of testosterone, like zero. Wow. Jeez. 
That's but I had pregnancy yeah. levels of estradiol. <laughs> right? Jeez. I'm looking at my time. Uh, what time do you have to wrap? Um, well, I'm, yeah, a little bit because I'm hungry and I have to take the pump out for her poopies. <laughs> ah, no problem. But yeah, the, the, the reason why we want trans kids to go through trans, you know, hormonal transition in their teen years is they will invariably have bodies that they are happier with. It reduces right. the necessity of surgery because you don't have, you don't have to do facial feminization because it, their faces develop along female lines. They're less likely to need breast augmentation because they grow in when they're supposed to. Right. You know, I mean, if they're not happy with their tits, they can always get it. They can always get breast augmentation, but they could do it later in life. They have the skeletons that they want. I mean, for for trans for my trans brothers, you know, they get the broad shoulders, they get the the you know the muscle support to look how they look like how they want, and they get you know these fabulous deep resonant voice boxes like mine, right? And for my trans sisters, you know, they get um they get a much more you know. A, a much smaller pharynx, which gives them, you know, a, a higher voice and it, everything is coded. I had the lovely occurrence of meeting someone who got to transition in her teen years. I honestly thought she was completely cis. Mm. And I think that, I think that's part of what scares some anti-trans people is because if they can't tell that someone's trans, how are they going to discriminate against them? That's a fair point too. Yeah. I mean, I'm, it's always a great conversation when it comes to young people transitioning because sci biologically and everything you said, it's sound. It, it, I get it. It makes sense. The only issue and it's not even really an issue but it's more like a concern because like the argument is like how soon right like they, they want them to tr start very soon in life and again i get it puberty is, is the best time for that to be happening but the only the only thing is like when we're younger there's a lot that we go through as kids when we think like i said at one point i thought i was a boy and you know, obviously, as I got older, I, I realized, like, no, that's not, you know, what I am. And I live my life happily as I am. But, you know, there's always that that moment of, like, you know, I could have gone ahead and really thought that and, and would have transitioned and things like that. Had had I had the information and knowledge when, because I, I was born in 85. So the times were definitely different. That information wasn't available. But, like, now when I think back on it, like, but what if it was? Would I have gone that route? in that path so right. that's the only thing that worries me is like a kid making that life changing decision and that fear of and unfortunately it has happened of like what if they regret it what if that changes because they'll never be able to go back well that and that is the place of the the puberty blockers right the puberty blockers do exactly what they did you know it sounds like it pauses puberty so that you you know the idea is if you ident identify kids that are trans early enough you know you can you know you you have an idea of when are they starting to to hit puberty and then if you can right. get it early enough they're still essentially in a child's body and you get you get as you know even before they hit puberty you get them into gender counseling right so that they can work through those issues mm -hmm. before, because, okay, so what happens if you delay puberty by a couple of years? Well, you stop the puberty blockers, they hit puberty, and they go on with their lives. Right. I mean, bone, you know, according to some studies, I mean, bone density might be like 
half a percent to a percent different, but Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, you know, drink some, drink some fucking milk, eat some Tums. You'll be all right. (laughs) Right. Um, but the cost of, I mean, if you, if you transition later in life, the cost fucking skyrockets. Yeah. Because now, now I have to get facial feminization. I was blessed with a very, very feminine face. I've had no surgeries. That's good. Um, You've got body feminization, uh, you know, obviously vaginoplasty, and I'm still debating, but the whole idea is that you lock in the preferred bone bone structure while you still can. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. And the the pro the discussion that we should be having, and I I use should very tentatively, we should be talking about how do we set up the process so that we can make sure that the kids get the support and the counseling that they need so that they don't kill themselves between puberty and when they get a chance to transition. Yeah. I've because, I've thought of that too. Because I don't like dead kids. Nobody does. Nobody should, you know. And and I've said this on streams before is like I understand. I, I have this like philosophy, like let kids be kids. They'll figure it out. But at the same time, I, I've said this, like if a, if a kid feels like they are transgender, there should be resources available for them. Like, and, and I think the biggest problem is obviously the parents. Cause like, that's the problem is like, these kids don't feel like they have a safety system because if it's not from their parents, then who? Well, well, we can't put it in the schools. They don't want the schools. Fine. Have some type of source for these kids to feel safe to talk to somebody outside of their family if they can't talk to their family. Somebody who is a trained professional. Somebody who is literally there. That way, because the whole thing is like, well, you have all of these trans people trying to like te- teach our kids. I'm like, right. And then if you know what solves that stigma, that issue is having train professionals who like if anything bad happens there are consequences right so like but why aren't we having this discussion everyone wants to point fingers point fingers they're trying to do this to our kids okay we'll have a solution then the solution is have trained professionals be available for these kids to go to without having their parents have to give them permission to do it just like doctors doctors will treat kids like minors and they can't, they don't have to tell the parents. Like they have laws that protect the kids at a certain age where their parents don't have to be notified of certain things. Like you have a kid, a, a young girl going for pap smear. They don't have to, doctors don't have to tell the parents what they found in that pap smear. If the kid was sexually active or not, they have protection. Why can't they do that for kids who are trying to fi- find themselves and figure things out if their parents won't do that? You know, and that's the problem. And I think that's the solution that there needs to be some kind of source for kids who are questioning these things to find it out on their own. Because, like, I'm sorry to break it to you people out there who, who, like, you do understand before there was transgenders in entertainment media, before there were gay parades and things like that. You do understand that people still came out as gay. People still became transgender. So not even having the information available that we have today and there were still trans gay so very real but i know you're on a time leash um yes we will definitely have to do it again and hopefully we'll be able to live stream it and then we can have it after hours i 100 percent. on one of my days off i would love to this has been an amazing discussion i'm so honestly thankful and feel honored that you reached out it's like we need to have a talk i was like oh my god first of all you're beautiful and i love you and yes <laughs> <laughs> yes 100 percent. we'll dive into that one in the after hours yes <laughs> yeah all right thank you for the gift of your time dear listener or viewer thank you for the gift of yours in the meantime be safe be well take charge and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.